The Road. The greatest adventure that I've ever been on involved a road, but not just any road, the road. Some of y'all have read about it in ICP's autobiography, Behind the Paint. Now this road, when we were growing up, it was the stuff of legend. Kids talked about it from as far back as I can remember. And there was rumors that abounded about the road. Some said there was an insane asylum on it. Others said that it was impossible to drive all the way through it and survive. And others, I remember one of the tales was this guy was driving down the road and he basically pretended his car broke down to spook his girlfriend. And then these uh, lunatics dragged him out of the car and killed him. Those were the kind of legends that as a child, they just sparked my interest to no end. And I vowed then and there that at some point I would encounter and defeat the road. As the years passed, I basically kind of forgot about it altogether until I was about 17 years old. One day, my friend Matt Hapton came up to me and he was all crazy excited. And he was like, Rob, you got to check this out. Last night, we went down this crazy ass road, road, road. It had an insane asylum on it. It had a cemetery. It was fucking wicked as fuck. He was like, you got to check it out. So I was like, oh, hell no. And all of a sudden, all those stories came up from my childhood. And I started remembering all the stories about the road. And I was like, could this be it? I was like, no way. So I was like, all right, check this out. We got to go down there. It's time for a ninja mission. We're going to walk that bitch. Walk that bitch. Walk that bitch. So we set the date. And of course, it couldn't be anything other than October 30th at midnight, Devil's Night. So we gathered the strongest warriors that we knew at the time from our crew. People that we knew would be a super asset to help us survive. So we gathered my brother Joe, right here, Joe Usler, yep, Steve Lindholm, what up, my boy Don Lichtel, Ta-da. Jim Simington, here, and Nate the motherfucking Mac. Yeah. Now we decided that we would each bring one weapon, you know, with us. So you know, people brought everything from a moose bone to bow and arrows. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we were like ready. Of course, I had the staff, which is my weapon of choice. We had about a month to prepare for the road. So the whole time we were in school, that's all we could fucking talk about. It was like whoever would listen to us, we were telling them about the road and what we were going to do, how we were going to freak it. And uh, finally, these two kids approached me and they were claiming that they had been to the road. And I was like, you know, at first I was skeptical, but then when they started describing it, There was way too many similarities. Like there was no doubt in my mind that they had been there. And they told me there was a monastery on the road full of monks. And the monks there, they don't like anybody to go there to fuck around. Anybody that comes around their property, they'll attack them. And they have shotguns that shoot rock salt. So they told us the story about him and his boy, you know, we're down there fucking around and they seen the monk monastery. So they pulled their truck over and got out and they started walking toward it to investigate. Suddenly they said they heard this whistling because the monks, they they took a vow of silence. So they, they can't talk, so they communicate by whistling. And they said they heard whistling and then shortly after that, they heard the shattering of glass coming from their truck. So they ran back there to check it out and that's when they got blasted by rock salt from a shotgun by these monks and then they got beat the fuck down. So they were so enraged, they said that, man, they were like super pissed off and they continued the story. They actually went back, found one of the uh, the monks' vehicles and trashed it and flipped it and all this other shit. Anyway, we were like, man, we were like, that only intensified the situation. You know, most logical people would be like, oh, fuck that. I ain't gonna fuck with that. We were like, oh, that's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> you know awesome. I mean? awesome. You tell awesome. me there's fucking awesome. these evil monks like patrolling the road and shit. We were like, man, that just made it all the hyper. It was like living up to the legend, you know? So anyway, it finally came to Devil's Night and we all piled up in the 69 Oldsmobile, this big ass fucking car with a V8 rocket engine and we rode down there to the mouth of the road. Now when we got there, we pulled up, we pulled into the woods and we camouflaged the car. 
we basically took all this foliage and we piled it on, on top of the car so that you know nobody could see it or find the car. And then we stood there at the mouth of the road. Now all of us were totally camouflaged the fuck out, even the face paint. And we all had weapons and we were in full ninja mode and the adrenaline was just surging. It was midnight and it was completely dark and we're just looking down at this long ass fucking tunnel that's before us just immense in darkness and the wind is shifting and you hear like loons in the fucking woods and these weird animals and shit. And you know, being from the city, we're not used to that. So we're looking around like, oh shit, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, uh, but we were ready. We were fucking more than ready. I think, I think our whole lives we were ready for this moment. So we started walking into the woods. Now, the first thing that happened to us on the road was we heard a CB going off. So when we heard the CB crackling, you know what I mean? Like maybe there's like a lookout or a caretaker, uh, you know, basically watching the road for like people like us that are out there like fucking around. So we ran into the cemetery. And I remember like the first thing I did was like we all kind of slid behind gravestones and we sat there and we were like completely still and silent. And we looked around and we were like, all right, look, check this out. I was telling everybody, we're just gonna wait here. We're gonna wait here until we see if the cops come or whatever, and we're not gonna fucking move. Cause we were like way deep in the cemetery. And I couldn't help but look over at the tomb uh, that was the, uh, the catacombs that was sitting in the middle of the cemetery. It's this big foreboding building. And I remember the story my mom told me about uh, how she used to go there as a kid and knock on that door. And, uh, you know, there, it was rumored they wouldn't survive if they did that. Anyway, probably about 10 minutes passed, but it seemed like three hours as we sat there waiting. And nothing happened. No car came, no nothing. So finally we were like, all right, come on, let's go. Now, walking the road is much, much different than driving it. It's... uh and you just feel unsafe. You feel exposed to all the elements and like anything can happen at any time. And the woods are so dense and so dark that it's as if like if somebody was hiding in the woods, they could just reach your arm out and grab you. Like you would never see them coming. So the whole time you're like looking constantly back and forth, you know, over your shoulder, like expecting anything to jump out at you at any time. So you like, needless to say, we were gripping our weapons super tight, like white knuckle tight as we proceeded forth because we are super cautious. Now, the next thing that we came upon was the insane asylum. It was actually lit up. There was lights shining at various points throughout the woods. Like they were probably about, let's say 50 feet apart. And so there was this fence that ran along the road on the left side that housed the Asain of Salem grounds. And then on the other side of that fence were all these lights just in the middle of fucking woods, you know? So we came upon this conclusion, I don't know if it was justified or not, that it was probably an insane lunatic had escaped, <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's why they had it lit up, because they were looking for his ass. So that compiled with all the rumors from the past got us really amped up, so we quickened our pace to get past the insane asylum, expecting any moment for an insane lunatic to jump out at us. We crossed past the insane asylum. Luckily, nothing happened. So then, the next thing we saw was a, what can only be described as an old, ancient World War II bunker. It was shaped like curved, like a big curved building. And it must have been a part of a farmland because there was a barbed wire fence that ran in front of it and bales of hay stacked up on the side of it, like a big hay pile. But it was so dark, we couldn't see any houses or a farmhouse or anything. It was just this old ancient uh, building, the structure. So I said, look, I'm gonna check it out. You know, I told everybody, I'm gonna check it out. They're like, all right. So I hopped over the fence and I started walking toward it. And that's when something huge moved in the darkness. And I looked up, I was like, my mind started flipping because I couldn't understand what I was seeing, but it was this giant form suddenly moved to face me and I'd seen its eyes glistening in the darkness. And it was huge. So I looked at it and then my mind started registering what it was and I screamed out, Bo! Bo! 
as loud as I could because all I saw was these fucking horns. So I thought the thing was about to charge me. It was this giant fucking beast in the in the middle of the woods in the darkness, <laughs> you know, just in this like by this building. And I thought it was about to rush me, so I started running. And I flipped over the fence like I don't I don't even know how I did. It was like a ninja flip. Like my adrenaline was going so fast. I was just like pa, and I was over that fence. Anyway, we started looking to try to see what the fuck it was, and it ended it up it was a fucking cow. Now, I didn't know this, but, you know, being from the city and stuff, but, like, some cows have, like, these small horns on their head, you know? So, once I determined it was safe, I kind of went over the fence again. And then the cow was, like, moving slowly away from me. That's when I started hearing all the, the moo sounds coming from all the cows that were packed in the infantry-style building that they were in. So I got real close to it and looked at it, and it looked like there was like a hundred of these cows just all packed in there. I mean, maybe that's an exaggeration, but there was a lot of fucking cows just packed in there. So I went back to my crew and I said, look, test the bravery. If we're gonna survive the road, if we're gonna be able to, to continue this mission, we have to fucking test ourselves right now. We each have to walk through that barn. So they were like, all right, bet <laughs> so we all hopped the fence we went up to the fucking the, the structure and we started to slowly walk through in the dark packed with cows now it's no easy task because like as we were moving through we started disturbing the cows and they all started like moving around to try to get out the building so as we're like walking you're just getting you're kind of getting battered by these giant bodies that are moving in the complete darkness and we didn't have no light that's another thing i wanted to mention the whole time of the road it was a strictly no light policy we didn't have flashlights we didn't have nothing we were in straight up ninja mode like we didn't want to give ourselves away so we're like walking through this barn and these cows are shifting and we're like sinking in shit and mud and uh it, it was just it was crazy so finally the cows all strung out into the field and we were like, they were mooing like real fucking loud, causing a big commotion. And uh, you know, and basically spanning out, like try to imagine like a hundred cows all fanning out into the field and they're all mooing and, and you know, just like getting li as live as cows can get. Suddenly we seen this light come on from a far distance. When the light came out, we could see the porch and out of the porch, we see this door open, and this man steps out onto the porch uh, with a shotgun. We were like, oh, fuck. Let's get the fuck out of here. And we all start running. And we were like, come on, we got to get over the fence. Now, in the darkness running, um, I didn't see the barbed wire. Like, I couldn't gauge where exactly it was at, and I ran smack into that bitch. And I caught one of the barbs, like, right between my eyes, like, just at the apex of my nose. I, and... It just bam, like I saw like this sharp, like white light for a second. And next thing I know, there was blood dripping down my nose in, in my face. Uh, and I saw like one of my other boys, he started up the, the pile of hay and all of a sudden he just sunk right in the middle of the hay. Boom, he just disappeared. <laughs> you know, just like a soft spot in the top of the hay and he was just disappeared. So at this time, everybody's kind of like panicking. And uh, eventually we made it all over the barbed wire fence and we, you know, we ran down the road for quite a bit. We finally got off to the side of the road and we started catching our breath. And at that point, people wanted to go back. They were like, man, fuck this, you know, this is too much, you know? So I remember it was at that moment where my brother stepped up and he basically gave this really elaborate speech, you know, like a super motivational speech you know, no, you know, this is our time. Why are we, why are we gonna go back now? We have to fucking school this and survive this. And, and you know, you knew there was gonna be dangers. You know, what, what did you think this is gonna be easy? This is what a test of a ninja is all about. Surviving this road, like right now, right here. You know what I mean? You're just gonna go back and, and fail? And he was just like, fuck that. And he was just getting all worked up. So when he gave that speech, everybody kind of like, it kind of inspired everybody again, you know? Like my brother was always real good at that, like hyping people up, like, you know what I mean? So, you know, of course I stood by him, you know what I mean? They're like, man, you're all fucked up. You're, you're bleeding from your nose and shit. And I was like, man, this ain't shit. 
You know, there was no way, no question. There's no way I was going back. So we continued further down the road. We traveled about a, about a mile or so more down the road. And we were coming across this bend in the road. And that's when we heard it. It started really far away off in the distance, almost like outside of your hearing range. And it sounded almost ghostly and it was a whistle. And when we heard that, we all stopped and in the back of our minds, we we're like, did we just hear that? And then all of a sudden closer, like that whistle was like, like off to the left and all of a sudden off to the right and closer, we heard a repeat whistle. And when we heard that, I swear to you, the blood in my body just froze. And it was at that moment when I realized all the rumors about the road were true. To me, everything that was spoken was true. And we were being hunted. That's what I realized next. That those whistles, and they kept repeating on each side of us from all angles were the monks in the road and they knew we were there and they were actively hunting us. So I remember I looked at Don and I was like, you know, my mind, like being a role player, like sometimes I can shut off fear and like think, I can kind of step outside of myself. And I looked at Don and I said, I said, Don, man, repeat that whistle, you know, so they think we're one of them, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so Don went up there and he did some kind of bullshit whistle. It sounded nothing like, nothing like what they were doing. And so when he did that whistle, all the whistling stopped and there was complete silence save for our heavy breathing in the crickets. I told everybody, man, get your fucking weapons ready. You know, this is it. You know what I mean? We were ready. We felt like they were going to come busting out of the woods at any second. So we started to pick up our pace, you know what I mean? Moving down the road and, and that turned into like a jog. We started running. You know, I just gripped my staff extra tight and we're running down this road, you know what I'm saying? And looking around and, and just like, there's nothing though. No whistling, no nothing, just silence. So we ran, I'm not even sure how long it was, maybe like five or 10 minutes when we finally started slowing down. And when we looked behind us, all we saw was a wall of darkness and we didn't hear any whistling. So we stopped and we were like, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. And we just really listened as close as we can. Now it was at this time, as we stood there on the side of the road listening, that I looked over and through the trees, I saw a light emanating. So I looked at my boys and I was like, that's it. That's the fucking monk monastery. It's in the same area, like straight up. We're right on top of the monk monastery. We left the road and we started cutting through the woods and we came upon a barbed wire fence. So we hopped that, went about 10 more feet, another barbed wire fence. So we all hopped that and we kept going real quiet as we possibly could be. And when we got close to the woods edge, we all dropped down and started low crawling all the way up to the edge of the woods. And we looked down. Now, the monk monastery, the stone building with the jagged edges, the jagged rooftops was all lit up. And there was a clearing, like they had cut all the trees around it for about a hundred feet in all directions. And it was in the middle of this field that kind of bowled down. So, the monastery was at the, the base of this bowl type effect, like the land sloped down toward the middle. It's kind of as if a big meteor hit there and left a big crater. That's kind of how it was, but it was like grass and it sloped down and there in the middle was the stone monastery, huge. And the tops of it were jagged points and it had vines growing up the sides of it and there was a gigantic window 
it looked like a giant church window in front of it. And there was a little shed along the side of it. And so we looked down at this monk monastery and as we watched, we can see through the giant picturesque window, there was a, some sort of ceremony going on. There was a monk in a brown robe and there was a man in front of the window. And the man was standing there with his head bowed as the monk looked like he was blessing him. And the man was just dressed in normal clothes, like jeans and a t-shirt, you know, but he was like kind of bowing there. And the monk wearing the full on cow with the hood was like blessing him. So we were like in awe as we watched this. And clearly they, they couldn't tell we were out there. I mean, we were like far away from where that was happening. The only reason we could see it is because inside the window were like hundreds of candles. They're all lit. So we stood there and watched it for a while. And then finally the monk and the man left. And I told everybody, I said, test the bravery. And they were like, looking at me like, oh shit, not again. And I was like, look, everybody's got to go down and we got to at least touch the monastery. Like if we don't do this, we're fucking straight up bitches. I was like, you got to do it. So they were like, all right, bet. So I started down the hill and I low crawled all the way down that bitch. Now this is even before I joined the army, but I'm gonna tell you what, man, I was like the best low crawl you ever seen. You know, stay low to the ground and it was sloped down, so it was pretty easy actually to slide down the hill. And I got all the way down to where the shed was and I stopped and I looked and I was listening to see if anybody was in there. And I didn't hear anything. So I kept low crawling all the way up to the building and I touched it. And then I started hightailing it back. Now, as I was going up, I saw everybody else coming down. Like when they seen like I had made it safely, everything was good. They all started running down, like not, not even trying to fucking front or low crawl or anything. And they just went all the way down to the base of the, the monastery. And I came back up to where close to where the barbed wire fence was in the same position. And I got down and I was watching them. Now, these motherfuckers, man. They were running all the way around that bitch, looking in the windows and you know, just like, like no fucking care at all. You know what I mean? I was like, oh shit, you know, what the fuck are they doing? So then after about a couple minutes of that, like just kind of like everybody going crazy, losing their mind, everybody started running back up. So when they got back to my location, they all kind of plopped down, they were out of breath and everything. I was like, whoa, what's going on, man? What are you guys doing? And everybody had a story. They're like, oh man, it's fucking crazy. I fucking looked in. I think it was Don. He was like, I looked in, I seen this fucking monk. He was walking down the fucking hallway, butt ass naked. I was like, get the fuck out of here. He's like, yeah, man, he had no clothes, just walking down the hallway. And then another guy was telling me, he looked in his window and there was a bedroom and there was a monk praying on the edge of the bed naked. So we were like, get the fuck out of here, man. What are you talking about? And it was like, yeah, and everybody had all these stories, like monks walking with the, the, the brown robes on, the whole nine. So we were like, all right, man, let's get the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? So we started crossing. We crossed the one barbed wire fence. We crossed the second barbed wire fence. We got back to the road. We started walking, like, quickly. We were feeling a little bit better because we went all the way around that monastery. Like, it wasn't shit, and we didn't get attacked. Nothing happened. We hadn't heard the whistling you know, in a long time now. So we're like, all right, we're fucking good. So we start crossing down the road and all of a sudden we started hearing these fucking shots. And we, and as we hear the shots, you just hear like these pellets is the only way I can explain it. Like these pellets ripping through the dense wood, like uh, popping off of tree trunks and, and, and splintering small branches and cutting through the leaves and shit. Like it's just, it, it was weird. Like it had this fucking crazy weird sound and it sounded like it was coming from all around us. We just heard this popping and these shotguns going off. So as we, as we heard that, I looked back and I said, run, run, as loud as I could, fucking run. And we started hauling ass because we couldn't even tell where it was coming from. And we just all started running as fast as we could, just like straight down the road, like the same direction we were headed, you know, just running. Now, as I ran, there was a small path that crossed across the road. It was like a, I guess a four way intersection. And as I ran past that, I looked off to my left as I was running. Now this path, this small path went down a ways, like maybe about 50 feet, and it opened into this clearing. And in the clearing, I saw about four or five pickup trucks, 
in a circle on the edge of the clearing. And there, standing in the middle of the clearing, were these monks. A group of monks, all dark in the, you know, really dark in the darkness, like almost like silhouettes. And they're pointing guns at us as we're passing by and shooting. So the reality of that, that image of them standing there in the clearing, that will forever remain in my mind. Like I will never forget that. It, it was it was one of the one of the scariest moments of my life, and you know it just felt like we weren't gonna make it. <laughs> you know what I mean, I, I really felt like at that moment that it was we were done, and so we kept running, and and my boy Steve Lindholm got hit in the leg, and he started screaming. Ah! He, I guess his momentum, his, uh, the adrenaline was flowing so hard that he just kept fucking running. And we were trying to help him. We were like, come on, come on. He was all in pain, and we just kept running. So we ran and we ran until we were almost out of breath, like completely exhausted. And that's when somebody yelled, car! And we looked back, and sure enough, coming down the road from the same direction we were running from, we saw a set of headlights that were coming at us. So we all ditched to the right side of the road, and we got deep into the woods, and we dropped down. And we were trying to be as still as we possibly could, even though we were all breathing heavy. And then I was looking, and sure enough, here come the pickup trucks. The same ones that were in the field, slowly creeping down the road as if they were looking for us. And as they passed one by one, you can see in the back window there were gun racks where their shotguns were nestled and their rifles were like nestled onto these racks in the back windows of the cab of these pickup trucks. Now the amazing thing was right at this moment, I look over and there's Don Lichtel standing up, notching an arrow into his bow as he's watching these pickup trucks slowly pass by. Now, one thing I got, I, I want to tell you about Don Lichtel. Like, I've seen this dude stand up. He's, a, he's, he's an Hawaiian dude. He stands about five foot six feet tall. And I've seen him stand up against muscular six foot four ninjas in high school, like talking mad shit, like ready to fight him. Uh, so he was standing there with his bow and arrow, and he's slowly pulling the bow back. And there at the tail end of the convoy of pickup trucks is one pickup truck that is just tailing behind and it's a big gap between the rest of the convoy and them. It's moving slower than the rest of the trucks. So we're all standing there watching Don in awe when suddenly he comes right up to the side of the road and unleashes the arrow almost at point blank range. Next thing we saw was the window just shattered as the arrow goes through and embeds itself into the passenger seat, narrowly missing the monk that was sitting there. The, the driver throws up his hands in panic, and the next thing we saw was the pickup truck swerve off to the side of the road and bam, hit a tree and come to a stop. Now when that happened, there was a few moments where we're all kind of looking at each other, we're looking at the pickup truck, and all of a sudden this rage just overtook us. And we all got up almost at once and we started rushing the truck. Now, by the time we gained our wits and started rushing the truck, they, would al they had already opened the, the, the driver and the passenger door and they started running through the woods. So we gave chase. Now, I didn't make it very far. We kind of split up because the two monks ran in two different directions. And one group was following the one guy, I was following the other guy. Next thing I know, I entered the woods and I probably only made it like, like maybe like five or 10 feet when all of a sudden this branch just caught my eye, just like poked me right in the eye. So I, I was all in this pain. I kept running for a little while longer and bam, I hit a bush or some shit, some underbrush. And it just totally knocked me off my feet. So as I lay there in pain, I'm like hearing this echoing of these voices deep in the woods. I hear my brother and my friends cursing out these monks and I hear him shouting like, oh, he's over here, come on, and just, just shouts echoing through the woods, just mad chaos. So anyway, I found out later that they gave chase for a while, but, but nobody ever caught him. And it was kind of lucky that that branch caught my eye because if I would have been 
running after them, I probably would have caught them because I was basically the best runner we had. And in a way, I'm, I'm really happy that, that I didn't catch them, you know, because if we would have caught them, it would have been real bad. So after the monks got away, we regrouped back onto the road and we continued down the road for a few more miles. As we came to the end of the road, we started to see sparse houses start to appear and we started to feel a sense of joy and safety as we emerged once again back into civilization. We had made it. We had survived and conquered the road. We traveled for a ways until we finally found a payphone where we called our boy to come pick us up, who took us back to our car. When we got there, we removed the camouflage to find a note was tucked underneath the windshield wiper. When we read it, it simply said, if we would have found you, we would have killed you. We assumed, of course, that it was from the monks. It was their last message left to us, warning us to never come back. But we had survived, so it didn't matter at that point because we went home with a notch in our belt that we had completed our ninja mission, the greatest ninja mission. And that was a moment that will forever remain in my mind as the greatest adventure that I believe I've ever been on and probably will ever be on in my life. <laughs>